moment comes, which comes but rarely in history. When we step out from the old to the new. When an age ends, and when the soul of a nation, long suppressed, finds utterance. Build courage when courage seems to fail. Regain faith when there seems to be little cause for faith. Create hope when hope becomes forlorn. I never learned how to tune a harp or play upon a lute, but I know how to raise a small and obscure city to glory and greatness, where to all kindred of the earth will pilgrim. The great questions of the day will not be settled by means of speeches and majority decisions, but by iron and blood. I have witnessed the tremendous energy of the masses. On this foundation, it is possible to accomplish any task whatsoever. The future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. Hello and welcome everybody to Let's Play Civilization 5. Yes, it's true. I have this game. I own it and I am going to make a let's play of it at long last. Well, notice it will be a single player let's play because there are many, many issues about this could be nice game of Civilization 5. So, first of all, I included the teaser trailer, not the original intro video, because the intro video actually sucks. And the teaser trailer is cool, in my point of view. So, without any further ado, let's set up a game. I will play Augustus Caesar. I, there is some downloadable content in form of new civilizations and basically um, they are pretty much overpowered or some of them are very strong. I don't know, Augustus Caesar was in, uh, included in the original release, so I will play him. Well, map type, I don't care, map size small. Well. I leave it on small because I tell you what first big issue of this game is uh, the time it takes your computer to calculate a turn is just ridiculous if you wish to increase this to <clears throat> anything beyond uh, beyond standard I would heavily heavily uh, recommend you to own a quad core CPU I own a dual core CPU, pretty decent one, but if you go la uh, on bigger maps than standard, you'll have a very long waiting time ahead of you. So difficulty, I don't know. Well, hard AI players receive small advantages to improve their play. Well, let's do this. Maybe I will die. I don't know, but might be a challenge. Well, game pace will set this on epic. I used to play on marathon, but the marathon in Civilization 4 is resembled by epic in Civilization 5. So if you play marathon in Civilization 5, it takes forever. So we'll play epic. And we don't really care about advanced setup. Let's look into it anyway. Well, random. Uh, all victory types allowed. No advanced game options. The blessings of the gods be upon you, Caesar Augustus, Emperor of Rome and all her holdings. Your empire was the greatest and longest lived of all in Western civilization, and your people single handedly have shaped its culture, law, art and warfare like none other, before or since. Be Through years of glorious conquest, Rome came to dominate all the lands of the Mediterranean, from Spain in the west to Syria in the east. 
and her dominion would eventually expand to cover much of England and northern Germany. Roman art and architecture still awe and inspire the world, and she remains the envy of all lesser civilizations who have followed. O oh, mighty Emperor, your people turn to you to once more reclaim the glory of Rome. Will you see to it that your empire rises again, bringing peace and order to all? Will you make Rome once again center of the world? Can you build a civilization that will stand the test of time? Well, we'll see about that. We all know from history what the Roman idea of peace means. And the music is getting a little loud in the background. Well, I'll tune it very much down because I don't like the music as much as I liked it in Civilization 4. So, there are many major differences between Civilization 5 and Civilization 4. First of all, you'll notice the tiles are not squares, but hexagons. And this is an improvement, I think. And I'll talk about it in a little while. We'll build our first city and start right away with a monument. And we'll enter it again and pick out, pick a name like Wien. Or I could play, uh, name it Vindolona. Vindolona is uh, actually the name of the Roman army fortress, which later developed to become the city of Vienna today. There you go, Vindolona. All right. What shall we research? I've only played this game in, in multiplayer and I've not even finished it once. Yep, that's right. But we came to a point where the game was practically won. Oh well, I remember I finished it once. I think, yeah. Again in a multiplayer setting. Alright, so our first unit is the most precious unit in the game. I'm not even kidding, because if you lose this unit, your expansion is pretty much over for a long time. And we found a natural wonder. Congratulations, the discovery of Old Faithful has increased happiness in the Empire. And if you place a city near it, it's, it, you gain extra happiness. Whoa, nice. I is something don't that may be helpful. Care. So, okay, so what happened right now? We gained one happiness. So, in Civilization 5, you have empire happiness as opposed to city happiness. So, you, you can see that my total empire happiness is plus 6. This can be 0 or even a negative value. Negative values are bad. I'll talk about it. So, so basically, if your happiness goes to a negative value, your city growth is, I think, a quarter of what it could be. It's pretty bad, but I think we will be able to stay in the positive with a little planning that's perfectly doable. So. Over there is our progress towards a golden age. So golden age can be triggered by specialists, by great people. Go away. And there is a ruin. It's similar to a goody hut. Or it's exactly a goody hut. So what I was saying was uh, we have our six happiness and our golden age progress right next to it. Uh, notice it's now at 39 and it, it will increase to 45 in the next turn because we have plus 6 happiness. And the ruins contain a map. Oh joy of maps. Okay, so there is an encampment over there. An encampment is a perfect opportunity to demonstrate the new fighting system introduced in Civilization 5. 
it's a much more slower paced fighting system i think you could say units don't necessarily die right away can i is there any possibility to switch this thing off i don't want advisors advisor level no advice at all thanks okay so first we'll explore over here and we've learned the location of yet another barbarian encampment over there in the nothingness of unexplored space and on the top of there is a city state all right and we've finished our monument. What does it do? It increases culture. Again, there is no city culture, there is only empire culture. Once this culture hits 35, there will be a nice decision for us to make. But until that, I think we could use another warrior. Okay, so if you hover your mouse over your enemy, you see the combat odds, They're all nice and neat, and we'll take it. Well, you might say, Helligator, are you completely mad? Those odds were horrific. Why did you attack? Well, I can heal my unit, and the barbarians. Shall the clay will... say to him that fashioneth it? What makest thou? What makest thou? Oh. Okay, guys, heal up. Um, I'll have to look. Requires trapping. Yeah, so another nice thing in Civilization 5, you first domesticate all your animals and after that you start hunting I don't know what's up with that but that's the way they made it so we'll have to deal with it yeah right away I think Civilization 4 with all expansions is still the better game maybe they okay yeah that's totally standard once you engage an encampment there spawns another barbarian coming to its aid this is pretty bad because once those brutes attack me I'll be very wounded and it's very likely that these brutes will come to finish me off so we'll back up at least out of range of this encampment uh -huh. You never want to lose your first unit, always remember. Adopt your policy. So, our culture hits 35 and it's time to adopt a policy. These are basically a replacement mechanic for civics. So, there are no civics, but there are policies. <clears throat> there is a fighting tree. I never ventured down that one. This, the liberty tree is pretty strong. And the tradition tree is also pretty strong. But for early expansion, we will want to first research liberty. Come on! So now they won't engage. Oh. Is that the way things are going to be around here? Come on, guys. <clears throat> All right. Oh, that went pretty well based on our odds. And another unit finished. Alright, let's build a granary. A granary doesn't work like a granary in Civilization 4 at all. 
A granary just plainly gives you food per turn in exchange for one gold. So they always tell you you can't eat money. In Civilization 5, you can. Promotion time, okay. The promotion system is way simpler, or, or yeah, a bit simpler, which is actually okay, because I think the promotion system in Civilization 4 was probably too complicated for convenient use, because there were higher tier uh, promotions, which you could only get with certain prerequisites and stuff. So we will first go for a combat advantage in rough terrain. So rough terrain advantage and every terrain advantage works both ways in offense and defense situations. <laughs> and it's time to heal up again. Thou shalt not muzzle the ox when he treadeth out the corn. Well, and with that second technology I'll make a brief interruption and be right back. <laughs> 